All right, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a mute all. You, you should have, I just muted everybody. You should not have the ability, if you want to talk, to unmute. Hello. Try that. There you go. Yep, I'm, I allowing, I'm, I'm allowing everybody to talk. Hello. Hi, I can hear you. This is Frank. Hi, Frank. Hi, Susan here, just saying hello. All right. This reminds me of the radio and everybody chicks in on a uh, net. Uh, <laughs> this will be the first uh, iPhone SIG I've been to. Yeah. Dave, we're going to take a few minutes and actually everybody does their highs. I will. <laughs> I just want to mute everybody. I will. Jeff says hi. It does say that people can start their video. I have that enabled. Video? Where is... Attendees don't have video, though, do we? No, we don't. Does it, it doesn't show it? That's yeah, weird, because it's checked off. All I see is the unmute uh, button. Uh, yeah, me too. Okay. I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to mess with that. Sorry. Right. I, will, I will turn off your privileges if we if we have some noise. <laughs> Just kidding. Turn off the TVs. Yes. All right. Let me um, get started here. Just let everybody know um, this is being, uh, I'm recording this on YouTube, but uh, it, it is out there live uh, privately. So. All right, let me do housekeeping here. <clears throat> Good evening, all. This is Randy. Hi, Randy. Hi, Randy. Just want to make sure you can hear me. Yes, I can. We're going to get started here in just a few minutes here. All right, thanks. Okay. The only way to do this is getting everybody here. <laughs> How many so far? We're now at 30. 30? Good. All right. Got that done. Got that open. We're hungry. <laughs> nice, Davis. I won't be talking to you other than over here. <laughs> right, I'm going to do another mute all. <laughs> okay, everybody currently is muted. So um, let me go ahead and share my screen here and uh, we're going to get started. Okay. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. This, uh, this is the iPhone SIG for this week, and uh, I ask that I am I am I am allowing everybody to have unmute their mics, and I'm taking this as an experiment to see if this can be uh, managed. Um, but I ask is if you. Um, if uh, you are done speaking, that you mute your mic so we don't have any noise, so it, uh, it doesn't distract the uh, the presentation for today. Um, let me change my sharing here real quick. All right, so I'm just sharing the browser here so everybody can uh, see that. So we're going to do the same format like we do in, in, in our live uh, uh, SIGs is uh, wanted to make it uh, 
as close to what we do as, uh, as possible. Uh, we're definitely going to get a lot of people here. Um, and there are probably some people here arriving that can't unmute their mics. So, so I will go through that once I uh, we finish the presentation here. So some of the news that caught my eye during this time, um, Microsoft Word and PowerPoint for iPad is now going to be supporting Split View. I'm actually going to demonstrate it a little later. Uh, uh, on Sunday, they got the announcement that uh, the latest suite of apps for Office for iPad, including uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, notably Word and PowerPoint can now do split view. So what that's what that's going to allow you to do in, um, in iPad is be able to split two instances of Word by putting them side by side and being able to compare documents, um, which is was this was long overdue. Uh, definitely, that was for sure. Um, and uh, as you see in this article, it does it does show that uh, what it looks like and how you're able to do it. And there's PowerPoint and then there's uh, Word. Um, I've tried it. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, demonstrate it in uh, in a little bit here. So, any questions on that? Pages and Keynote already does that, right? I'm not sure, Frank. We, we should try that. We'll try that when we do the demonstration. How's that? Why don't you remind me, okay? I believe that all uh, Apple applications do it, but I haven't verified that. All right, so next story, um, Apple is touting the broadcast quality of iPhone cab uh, cameras as Hollywood has adopted adapts to at home production. American Idol actually is gonna be recording the remaining, their remaining episodes uh, with you only, use, only using iPhones as productions. I know Conan has been doing it while he records his show at home. Uh, it just comes to a test of how amazing the camera is on the iPhone 11 Pro uh, that they're gonna be able to do this. Um, and it's uh, really cool the fact that uh, um, they can just take a iPhone 11 Pro with a tripod and a ring light and be able to uh, uh, record uh, record a, uh, a show like American Idol. Um, they've gone through some pretty amazing production by going to every single contestant's homes and uh, setting up uh, setting up uh, cameras and production crew, the whole thing, and they're of course social distancing. Um, and uh, I believe also WWDC, which is going to kick off next month. I'm um, talking about that in a minute. Uh, you probably can expect that there are going to be iPhone cameras playing a big role um, in broadcasting as well, including a keynote. Um, so that, that was pretty cool. Anybody have any uh, comments or questions on that? Dave, uh, did you see I put a post out uh, in the community that basically said that for developers, it's going to be free? Yes. Well, okay. Yeah. Let's. Let me just. Let me just go right to that story. Um. um I believe you. Uh, I thought I bookmarked it. Let's see. Not, well, let's go. You know what? Randy, let's go to the community. That's probably the best place to go, right? And let me click the button right there. And there's that fine announcement that you posted. Hope everybody's been signing up to the community. So here's here's the story. Uh, the WWC, like I said, is going to be likely shot on an iPhone. And um, the 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 important part, you're right, uh, it is going to kick off on on June 22nd. I am I do have a developer account, so I'll be able to uh, watch it for free. Well, not necessarily free, but I pay for a developer account. But um, uh, but that that is pretty amazing. And I think the you're obviously seeing a lot of this trend with with conferences uh, this happening um and not not mostly in this uh, room are probably not familiar with jamf which is a is a tool that manages macs and and uh ios devices for for enterprise um they have a conference every year and they of course charge for it and uh they were going to switch it from minneapolis to san diego so of course they they canceled that part of it but now they're going to do it uh virtually and uh it's going to be free everybody can watch it and see it so Seems like that's a trend going on here with um, uh, with uh, uh, a lot of these conferences. Uh, did you want any other comments, Randy? One of the benefits of the pandemic. Yes, as <laughs> what, we're, what we're experiencing right now with the iPhone sick here, we're getting to be able to enjoy uh, seeing each other. Um, well, I didn't be able to get the cameras working, but at least we'll be able to talk. So um, you could see me. <laughs> uh, so 
uh yeah this is this is this is absolutely really good news and i'm, I'm real uh real excited to uh to be able to, to watch this and see what there is to uh to watch i mean obviously we i've spent many years watching and most many of us have watching the keynote so this will be the first time that it's truly um uh remote so it'll be interesting to see where it goes um found this deal here i want to make sure I, I, I found out this was actually um not about five hours ago uh if anybody's interested in looking at uh, buying purchasing airpods uh the the old the the, the lower end model which is still a decent pair of uh, air, earphones um it's 129 dollars um and it's through um many of these uh uh retailers like amazon and bnh photo best buy others uh isn't a bad idea to check that out um google that and find that if you want to uh I'll check that out uh, as far as uh, as far as that goes. Um, anybody have any questions on that? I saw something earlier today. I was going to post it, but I decided not to. Amazon, for a short period of time, is offering the Pro um, AirPod, AirPods for uh, twenty dollars off. So instead of two fifty, yeah. it was two thirty. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's a it's a nice uh, nice nice little deal here. So. Um, see what else I had here. Now, like I said, the great, great place to go is, is, um, is our community. Cause uh, like I said, Randy is, is very good at uh, posting a lot of uh, great articles. I have been even trying to do it as well. And uh, uh, you know, kudos to you for doing that. Uh, we've got a couple, uh, uh, we got a couple things in here um, that to, to review and uh, read. And uh, I see, uh, uh, there you go. You actually put in there uh, some of the iPhone 12 specs. Uh, I know I've been reading that. There's always a lot of rumors. Um, but we can look at that real quick. Um, new leaks. Of course, it's rumors. <laughs> uh, starting at 128 gigabytes of storage. That's that's cool. Um, you know, we were always sick. We were always tired. Of the, but the base model was going to be a 120 or a 64, sometimes 32 back in the old days. Um, and uh, I think these, yeah, they're they're obviously going to step up and. Come up with some new models uh, for the, the end, uh, towards the end of the year, and it's going to be interesting to see where that goes as far as uh, uh, how that uh, how that happens. Uh, you know, here's some of the specs here that they're they're allegedly saying it's going to have. Um, right, and they have prices as well that they think might be yeah. uh, right, yeah, right here. Store. Yeah, seven forty nine and eight forty nine for the Max, and six forty nine and seven forty nine for the, the twelve uh, Pro. Or and then whatever. the Pros are down below. Yeah. Oh, that's right. They're they're going to have a the lower end just like they have now. Oh, this is interesting though. If that comes out, that they're, they're actually going to offer a max model for uh, uh, for the low end. Interesting. And of course, you got the pro line here, which of course is going to be loaded there. Yeah, six is that is that eight gigs of RAM? Let's say. Wow, that that that's a lot. That's the most I've seen in an iPhone. That's going to be interesting to see if that happens. But look at the price on that iPhone 12 Pro Max. Hey. I, mean, I would, <laughs> I, I would probably. Well, I, I mean, I'm I'm on the trading program, so it's not like I I pay, uh, I I buy it outright. So, um, but I would probably be satisfied with 128 now. So, I mean, I I either would go 120, I would go 128 or one or 256. So, or storage goes, and I'm not even using half of it. So, I'd probably be fine with that. So, uh, but no, it's it's definitely going to be coming soon. You know, right now, any iPhone is 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 good. I mean, the, we've talked about the iPhone SE. I think that's a, a gr absolutely great phone. If you're in the market looking for just a low end, um, uh, a low end model that uh, that's going to get you what you need, and we talked about it uh, in other meetings that uh, the iPhone SE is going to be going to be perfectly fine. So, um, any other questions? Anything else, Randy? You think uh, you're always good at a news source? Why I always go to you? <laughs> when, uh, uh, you know, I just read Apple News in the morning, <laughs> and yeah, I see a lot as, of articles as well as I as well as I do. So. Yeah, uh, I, I go to the Apple section and I, I read and, you know, if there, I find something interesting, I try to post it. Yeah, yeah. So um, so I think uh, uh, I'll just look and see if I have any any other news stories here that will be of interest to people. And, is um, the, uh, the size of the SC screen, is that 5.4 inches? Um, good question. Why don't we just go? I think it's 4.7. I thought it's 4.7, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Because it's, it's, more, saying okay. It's, not, it's not the 4.0, which is what people sort of wanted. They wanted the smaller screen. Okay. okay. Here's the SE. Uh, let's go to the stack and the specs. Uh, 
Oh, I should have just went to the, the buy button. Yeah, I should have went to the tech specs. <laughs> I'm not buying. <laughs> Why not? I got plenty of what I need here. Uh, uh, yeah, four point seven inch. There you go. Compared to the eleven, yeah. So okay, because yeah, it was the same size as the uh, the iPhone. Because it's basically the iPhone eight uh, that, that that's on steroids. Basically, it, that they added the faster processor and and uh, all that stuff. All right. So four different sizes too. Yes. Uh, all the cars. Four different sizes. Of com- four yeah, storage. Yeah. Right. Capacities. Yep. All right. Let's uh, let me stop sharing here. I'm going to check to see if anybody else has popped in here and make sure they can talk too. Oh, all right. Mr. Fairbairn, I'm going to promote you to a panelist as you popped in late. And do that. Hello, Jen. Hi. Hi. Hey, Bob. Hi. Sorry, it was a few minutes late. He's saying hi to everybody. Okay. Hi. Hi, everybody. So, uh, all right. Yeah, so, Bob, now that I have you in the room, I can have you. Uh, keep, <laughs> I was, keep monitor- watching I was monitoring. I was monitoring. <laughs> uh, good. So, yeah, I what I'm I, I've actually been doing is uh, I'm going in and um, um, it's out. I've been here for about 10, 10 minutes, so I've watched what you've been doing. Okay, so you, I've made you a co-host, so you have control, full control. Got so it. you can go in and actually, you can actually mute. Oh, you see those buttons there. I, got I was hoping fine. to get the. I was hoping to get the video open, open up for everybody, but for some reason it doesn't give. Even though it's it's checked off, it says uh, allow participants to uh, yeah. allow panelists to start a video. I guess I guess you have to, to be a panelist to start a video. It doesn't give you the option to. Uh, yeah. To well, that. So, we'll have to right. test that offline. Yeah, I mean, if you want, as you're going, if you want to turn people's cameras on, have at it. Yeah. I don't. I don't. They don't need to see me, or I mean. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, because you're now a co-host. I, you know. <laughs> got the name. You got, you got it. So, all right, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the the uh, iOS beta. I know that it's not something too many people talk about as far as uh, uh, what's out there. I'm gonna share my phone that I have on beta right now and be able to kind of talk about a little bit of the stuff that's going on here. Let me get it shared here real quick. Can remember how to do it. And give me a code. This is beta four, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes. All right. So let me share share my screen again here. Where did the screen go? There it is. I keep clicking it. I'll just share the phone. You didn't see anything else. Everybody see that? Yep. Yep. Now we can. Yeah. I don't know how much of a lag there's going to be when I move screen. So uh, we may, you may expect that. So um, absolutely. So uh, the interesting thing with beta was um, with this latest beta, it was we're, we're currently at thirteen point four point one, and we th- we thought that they would go to thirteen point four point five because um, it's uh, logical that uh, that that would continue on. But what happened was uh, they added what's called a software development kit or SDK. Oh my god, I clear my throat. <coughs> Water here. talking too much um so they had to add that because of the 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 covid 19 uh edition that was the apple and google team uh tracking for uh for covid i don't know if anybody was uh, familiar with that uh you know, bob did you did you read in too much about that 
Which which part? The app. The, the app. Uh, Apple the... and Google are doing with the COVID nineteen, oh. and, and then they're they're putting a tracking uh, system in. Uh, in all yeah, it's in it's 10... really it's really fascinating. Um, <clears throat> I spent about ten or twenty minutes just kind of studying it, and um, uh, I didn't see anything that scared me. Let's put it like that. Everything's done both oh. and both Google and Apple. They're they're doing everything's done kind of on device. And right. it's, it's, it's like, uh, you know, it sees a signature and it says, uh, Joe was next to Mary for an hour on the 15th. Uh, and Mary got, Mary got the bug, right. go tell Joe. All right. But they don't know who Joe is and they don't know who Mary is. They don't see any of that. They just know that those devices right. now, is it perfect? I don't know. I'm, I am not enough of a security expert to say that, but it's better than having a central repository. Yeah. I, I haven't seen a lot of um, chatter about it not being secure. Uh, and uh, and um, based, I, I mean, of course, you're going to have the pundits that are going to they're, they're going to question it right away. Because, um, um, but I don't know. Have Have you seen anything? Uh, there's There's been a lot of discussion in a couple of the info, information security groups, but I haven't seen anything that comes out and says stop. Um, they made a bunch of change, so they did a first release of the documentation, and they updated again. And I haven't seen uh, a whole bunch of comments uh, or any comments on the on the on the updated yeah. stuff that they actually released the software development kit to. Uh, this to is build. this is Tom. This is Tom Wicklin. Steve Gibson had a long segment on it, and he loved and he, it. He, he have, raved about it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. So then, we're, then, if if Steve Gibson likes it, we're in good shape. <laughs> Uh, I, I want to. I, I love Steve. He does some fun stuff. I want to see a few other people do it. But it is one of. Sure. The, it is a really amazing collaboration between the two companies. I'm. I'm very pleased yeah. to see that. I have yeah. one comment. I I read an article today about Iceland. They have um, 38 percent of their population with this. The article basically said, unfortunately, they need at least 60 percent in order for it to be very useful. So they said, even though a lot of people are using um, their app, um, they need it to go up to about sixty percent to be of any value. So that's a caveat, I think. Uh, and and again, it's not a panacea because, like, it's the same problem worldwide. Does everybody have a smartphone in their pocket that can run this software? And the answer to that is a emphatic no. So everybody's got to go buy an SE. Go buy an SE. Apple will be happy. <laughs> Yes. It also depends on people voluntarily reporting that they are infected. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that, but yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has to be validated. So you can't just say, oh, I'm infected. No, no, you have to you have to have proof that anyway. That well, I don't want to go too far down the future of that, but it's coming. There it is. Yeah. yeah. So here in the phone here, everybody sees uh, this is I just what I'm going into the health app here. Um, under privacy and health, it does, as you see here, it does give the COVID-19 exposure logging. So you, by default, it is already turned off by this, this latest version of the beta, we're in beta four, I think it is, um, that does give you the options to turn off. Now, the only way this is going to work, according to the way this I've been seeing through the beta here, is uh, the fact that uh, if it is based on the app, there's a specific app would have to access this information and access the, um, access the service. So but right now it's going to be off by default. Even if uh, I wanted to turn this on, I can't. It's, it's grayed out as you see here. Um, so there's no really active, uh, there's no real active information. And you yeah, see there, they're giving the full options and being able to delete the log if you need to. Um, and it, it does, uh, uh, it does give you that. So um, the other thing they're, add, they're adding is um, uh, the fact that you can, um, your, the medical ID that you, that, that is added uh, does allow uh, to, uh, uh, I'm getting here again. Uh, does allow to uh, notify the uh, emergency services and send your information right to them if you're making a 911 call right from phone, and you can you can enable that. Um, have you heard about that, Bob? Um, no, I, uh, there's so much in there that I haven't paid much attention to in there, and I should I should really pay more attention to that. You're right. That's 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 all really new. Okay, so all right, you can to see me. my age and how, how much I weigh there. So sorry. <laughs> yep. 
it, it, so you, what you can do is you actually can go in and turn on and see at the bottom here, it says share, share during emergency call. So what it's going to do when the 911 operator is on the phone, your information that's in here under your medical ID, what your conditions and everything in here are, are, um, uh, is in there. And then when you turn that on and you make a 911 call, it's going to, it's going to send that information. This is, this is brand new. That's good. That's a, a, one of the other notable things that, uh, that they've added in beta. Beyond that, it's just bug fixes and, you know, like the normal stuff. Um, and I'm anticipating this is going to be coming out anytime now, um, as far as its release goes. I thought if I, I thought I would find it to be interesting that, uh, um, that uh, that to people that uh, what what's coming pretty soon here and, that, and it, it's it's it's, it's going to be really close because as you know uh, when when WWDC happens uh, they they release their last versions of the old version of iOS and we're probably into, we are anticipating there's going to be iOS uh, 14 uh, coming and then we'll have more to talk about seeing what the Apple comes up with next. Uh, yeah, we, you're right. We could be very close to the, the well, th they've been updating a lot. You know, I don't know. We'll see. This is going to be real close to the last, uh, uh, you know, real release of this version. Yeah. Um, the other thing, uh, and I know we had some discussion in the, in the because um, uh, I post that article in the community uh, about the face ID and having a mask when you're wearing a mask. Well, in, in this version of the beta, and it looks like that's going to come forward, uh, the fact that the, if you have a mask on and you wear it um, and you're trying to get your face ID to unlock it, it'll automatically see that you have a mask on, automatically go to the passcode. So then you got to put the passcode in. So they haven't come up with anything yet as far as to the face ID being able to um, actually um, unlock with the face mask, but uh, they did. Uh, uh, but they but they did come up with so it's a little easier to unlock if you are ha if you do have a, a face mask on. Face ID is uh, probably temporary because of uh, we're going to probably go to eye prints, you know, eye ID. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> uh, other thing that they've added is iCloud Drive sharing, which is awesome, and. Uh, you you actually can go in and tap in. Uh, I don't have a folder in in, in this um, in in this on this phone. So, but what you can do is you can tap and hold, even though it's not showing it here, and it'll actually give you an opportunity to tap share. And this folder will then get shared with somebody. You can just send it to them, and it gives them access to it. So just like you're doing any other file type sharing with uh, things like Dropbox and such. Um, Where's the share command? It's it's not. It's I don't have a folder in here on this phone, so it's. Uh, um, oh. So I can't, I can't, uh, I can't show it to you. But when you do, when you do, that's why I started tapping this folder because PDF experts out here. When you tap this on here, you can actually go in and uh, uh, share the folder by just tapping that uh, that folder, and it's supposed to be on this menu. I don't, I don't have it on here though. So, um, uh, so that that's interesting. That that's a uh, that's good stuff. So, any other questions, questions about about that? Do they? I have a Mac with uh, Mojave because I don't want to go to to Catalina and destroy my 32-bit apps. And I've been trying to uh, do a, a collaboration folder with uh, Davis, uh, and he's able to to share it. But he has the he has you know Catalina, and I don't, and I cannot get. Is, do you know if there's dependence on the, the the OS for that to work? More than likely, yeah. It's I mean I, I hate to say it, Frank, but you're going to have to look at the apps and, and look hard to see are these apps really um, of value to you that you got to have them uh, and and go back to the developer of those apps and say why don't you have a 64-bit version? Because everything's going 64-bit on Mac, so um, I would I would I would say you should should look at um, well, some of them are pretty essential. I mean, I use Print Shop a lot. I use uh, a whole bunch of engineering software. It's thirty-two bit. So, yeah, sure. So, unfortunately, that's yeah, this, this is the way it is. I mean, with the operating systems that they evolve. I mean, uh, it happens in the Windows world too. I mean, as things evolve, apps are going to start becoming uh, obsolete. I'm surprised that they don't have a thirty-two, uh, sixty-four bit version of Print Shop. Interesting. But I thought that you was do. still. Oh, you you do you have to pay for it or? No, they don't. He was surprised. <laughs> oh, he was surprised they do or they don't? They don't, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm surprised they don't have it because, uh, but then I don't know how, you know, they don't ever have an upgrade. 
I don't think it's been a year or two since I I went from yeah. three to four. Sound like that there's close to a wind down. That, that print shop yeah. is. Uh, I mean, it's a very old program. It's been along, around, around for a long time. Yeah, but it it solves a lot of my problems. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, this of course it relates to Mac, but. Uh, in Catalina, they've changed, so only 64-bit apps will work in Catalina going forward. So well, that's the, kind of the dilemma with uh, with that. So, all right, let me. Uh, I'm going to switch phones here. I'm going to go to my my um, other phone. And I'm going to talk a little about. I got a couple. I'm I'm, I'm really got, I got a lot of tips for you guys tonight. Uh, let's see. I unmuted you. I saw your text, Bob. <laughs> No biggie. I know. I'm kidding. All right. All right. Let me uh, share my phone that's currently on the regular version. And I want to talk a little about mail. Um, I don't know if anybody was aware of this. If you go into settings um, and then you go into mail here, I'm in settings and mail. Not me, seeing it yet, uh, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Let me share. Your, let me share my screen again. <clears throat> There's that little click there. Should be able to see it now. Yes. Um, so you, I went into settings and I'm going into uh, into mail right here. And th th this has got some, some interesting settings in there. I, th I thought it was interesting to go through it and, and seeing how uh, it controls. I'm, most people are using uh, the, the native Apple Mail app uh, as, as part of iOS. Um, so the first category here is allowing mail to access. And um, in Siri and search, that's important to have that. So these are all turned on by default if you want be able to uh, Siri to show um, suggestions in the app. It'll suggest things, and you can tell Siri to uh, to open that, um, as well as learn from the app. And uh, and in search, it, it also has show and search, suggest shortcuts. Um, that's it. That's a whole other uh, topic by itself with shortcuts. Uh, but it will suggest short, short, shortcuts when it sees something in the email that that might potentially make something easier for you to 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 run. Um, and then. You, you can show Siri suggestions on your lock screen and that gives you some security settings in there to be able to make some changes. Um, uh, in the message list section, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped here. So as far as notifications go, you, you can allow notifications and if, if you, I, I'm one, I'm sure Bob and, and others, some others are, I also have multiple email accounts. I have them all in here and I can go into there and you can actually change how your email notifies you. Um, I just have the badges on. I don't have any sound. I, I don't have any sounds or anything. I just like to just see the badges because it's kind of annoying, uh, but that's my choice. But you can go in and, and change it um, if you want to uh, have it on the lock screen, notifications and banners. You can you can change the uh, the sounds to whatever you'd like if you want it to, to notify you. As well as in options, if you want to go in here and uh, set it as when unlocked, you can show the previews. Um, uh, it won't show a preview unless it's unlocked. Uh, so it's that that's important if you want to, don't want anybody looking at any email that pops up. So, and then if you go down towards here, the bottom here, you have your favorite mailbox, favorite mailbox um, that gives you the setting for that. I'll show you that in a minute. And notification grouping is automatic. And I always leave it in that setting there. Um, sell your data. That's your choice. I mean, it's on by default. And these, these days with people having unlimited data, I would think you can keep that on. It isn't a big issue. Um, uh, and uh, under message list, the preview, I like two lines. You can actually expand it up to five lines if you want to, to be able to give five lines of preview of, of the mail, mail app uh, on that as well. Anybody have any questions as I was going through this? No. All right, just making sure. Uh, and then uh, under messages, you go under ask. How do we first. ask a oh, question? You just, you just speak. Hi. Oh. Okay, I, I wrote a couple of uh, notes and I, I mean, questions and it they weren't answered, so I didn't know. Oh, okay, yeah, you could go, you could do it, you could do it either way. If you if you have any questions on this specific topic I'm I'm speaking of speaking about right now, then you feel free to jump in and ask. Uh, but I'll, I'll I'll have a Q and A at uh, towards the end of the session here, so we'll be able to open. Okay, up just mention to people that they touch. Uh, raise hand or whatever on the zoom in <laughs> yeah or just uh, just or put something in the uh yeah put something in the q a or in the chat i got yeah. both open 
Yeah, Bob. Oh. Bob is is my is my my guide here. He's monitoring any questions. So if you want to, if you don't want to verbally ask it, you can type it in the in the session there, and uh, and Bob will answer it, or he'll 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 give it to me, and I will answer it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, all right. So under messages, um, you can set your messages if you want to ask before deleting. I turn that off. It drives me crazy. I want to be able to delete a message without me without asking me. Um, but <laughs> you can turn that on. Um, I'm not scared because if you delete it, it goes just in the deleted folder in the trash folder. So you can go back and get it if you delete it by mistake. But why have it nagging? Do you sure you want to delete that? So you, I that's turned off. Um, you can have remote images turned off if you don't want them to come up. Um, but I prefer that to have to be on. And generally, there, there's no uh, reason that there's any uh, not having that on so for security reasons. Uh, and then here, my 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 favorite not not thing to do with mail is is threading. I don't like threads. Threads are a way of where it shows a thread and then it shows all the mail under it and it, it sorts it. It's, it makes it impossible to find things, in my opinion. So I turn off threading. I don't like that. Um, uh, you can collapse red messages where it just collapses. It makes it uh, change. Um, and then uh, most recent on message on top, you can turn that on if you want to. And you know about threads and all that stuff is all in here as well. Um, if you do a block ascender, if, if an email comes through, you can set it to leave it in the email in the mailbox or you can move it to the trash. Um, I probably should have this to trash because if I have a block ascender, I'd rather be in the trash than sitting in my inbox. But you can change that to anything there. And then of course in the block here, this also shows all the block phone numbers and, and I'm sure everybody has a long list like I do here. And then you can, you can add you can add email addresses as far and as well as phone numbers in here. And these are numbers are all blocked, so they can't call or text or um, or you'll you'll never see them. So, um, and then the last time part of the section of, of mail settings, um, I thought it's good to know about is uh, you can set to also always blind CC yourself. So if, like if if you're one, there's there's a few people like that that like 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 the fact that if it'll it'll um, blind CC every time you reply to them. You may want to have record of the email each time you send something. You could turn that on. I mean, that's a that's an okay setting. I don't I don't use it. That's why I turn it off. Um, but uh, it does come in handy sometimes if you want to. Uh, I want to turn that on. Um, and if you want to be able to mark addresses, you can actually uh, actually mark specific addresses if it has like a particular domain, like if uh, it's like Microsoft.com or Apple.com or something. I don't know if you necessarily need to do that. So generally, I I leave that blank. Um, if you want to increase the uh, the quote level, you can you can set that on or off. Um, it just gives an indentation of when you've forwarded a reply to message, so it doesn't stay in line. So it's a little easier to see when, during the replies. Um, include attachments with replies. You can set that. Uh, uh, you can set that to always if you'd like. I know some people like to do that, but I usually it should be set to never. Um, you you can set it to ask if you so choose if that maybe maybe you want to have it ask you to include that. Then last thing is the default account. You know, like I use Gmail as my my default account for my personal email, so I use that's how I have set it on here. Uh, but you can set any of your email accounts uh, set to uh, default. So, any uh, questions about mail? I think it's uh, it was good to understand what you can do to, in some of the advanced settings uh, in in mail to uh, uh, to make things easier for you. So, Dave, I have a question for you. Do you keep your yes work email in mail or do you use like outlook or some how do you separate work and home or do you good question i work tells me i have to use outlook okay not, that's what i, I do not yeah i do i do not have a choice when i when i use my, when i use my work email so that's why you didn't see it in there okay um so um i like outlook i i've i, I was tempted to want to use it but the problem is i don't want it to be combined with my personal email and Microsoft's doing a much better, better, I better uh, job of with Outlook, and Outlook, I swear, it gets updated like every other day. <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, I, I was just curious because, of course, uh, uh, being you know me myself and I, and I'm the IT administrator. Mm -hmm. uh, I've I've been thinking about doing that because I've had trouble making silly mistakes right. of you know going you know sending a business email to a person, a personal, and I was just I was debating about that. So I I may just go give Outlook a try just to try that. Yep. I, I like it, and and th those who, who are interested in Microsoft Outlook is a uh, is a great program. Um, I can I can show you what it looks like as far as my my work email. My, my, <coughs> it does have a it does have a face ID. So I have to have it set so it so it blocks. Um, and so it block uh, it locks the the device so I can't go in there. 
it takes a little getting used to. So you have to navigate like here's the inbox and you have to go through and, and understand how to do that. And, and, and there's a calendar that's built into here. You can search emails right from here, the people that you work with, um, all that. So, um, so no, I like, I like Outlook. If anybody is looking to, to, to switch, I mean, I, I might even do a session on, uh, on this. I, I may even do the session on, on this on my podcast. Uh, yeah, well, one of the there, things Microsoft. Okay, so and and Susan put her hand up. I guess I don't. Susan, you can just yeah. talk. Yeah, go ahead. Go okay, ahead, Susan. I was just waiting for a break. Yeah, uh, I want to know. Would you remind us how you add an additional account to to your mail program? Sure. If you saw, if if one wants to add Outlook, for example, I would. Well, that's a that's it. different. That's a different question, well, Susan. Yeah, yeah. There's there's oh okay. There's, there's, there's two ways. I mean, if you want to add, like I'm in settings right now, and and uh, if you want to add an account. Uh, you go under password. That's what that got confusing because it used to oh, be combined. It's, terrible. it's yeah. horrible. Yeah. So I'm like, well, oh, that's why, yeah, Susan, you, you weren't able to come see that because it makes it difficult to know. So you have to go under passwords and accounts to create an account. Uh, okay. And you see, see down here, you click add account. And then now it gives you the option to, to choose uh, the type of email that you have. Um, most people would probably have, I mean, if you use Google or iCloud, um, you, you would pick that. I don't know why Yahoo and AOL are still on there, but <laughs> okay. Um, if you use outlook.com, that's the Microsoft's email uh, service. Uh, you can pick that. Or if you, you're using something like, uh, you know, an example is, uh, uh, Becky, you have your own domain. So do I. Uh, and uh, the, the club uses uh, Bluehost as our as our, our services for, uh, for email and websites. I would tap other. And then I would have to know, um, I would have to know all the information. Because as soon as you type in the, um, the, the, the email address and then, the, and then you put the password in, It'll go to the next screen and then it'll start asking you for what the server name is and all that stuff. Whereas the, when you see these choices here, it, it does it automatically. Like if you were to add your iCloud account, it automatically knows where to go and how to set it up. Same thing with Google. To answer your question? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Thanks. All right. And and the other side of that is, so what I want to do is I currently put my work email in Apple Mail and I have found myself making mistakes uh, okay. uh, and, and, I, and things getting mixed up. So what I think I'm going to do is install uh, Microsoft uh, Outlook on all my devices, uh, Windows, you know, Mac, o, Mac and iPad, everything, and just do my work email in right. Outlook. It okay. requires I look two places, but um, anyway, that was my I idea. Becky or Ed? I don't know who's got your hand up, but I see a bed Ed and Becky with hands up. Yeah, uh, I would just uh, pass along a uh, little tip that uh, I learned the hard way over the weekend. As I yeah. was, as I was, <laughs> I, was gonna, I was just thinking yeah. about that, but the, the yeah. last, I started talking about this. Yep. Yeah, the thing the thing that uh, often happens is that uh, if you're doing an other uh, provider, in our case, Bluehost. They may send you a little, oh, it's called a profile file. It's a configuration profile, yeah. And, yeah, and it's usually, it's a, usually it's supposed to work. And that's why I was, I was like, oh, I'll crud. Right, so right. I just went and reset the password and to say, yeah, just use the... Use the um, yeah. Well, here, here's the gotcha thing, right. Dave. Because uh, I, after trying the, uh, the information that you sent, we set up another uh, for the uh, program team uh, account on mysky.org. And uh, so I sent this stuff in and in the process of... <laughs> Doing it, uh, what? What? it basically in the process of setting it up. I uh, uh, thought things might be easier if I just went and used the profile. Yeah. And so I set that in, and I won't go through a lot of details of it. If anyone does that, I just want to warn you about a gotcha. If you use a profile, you cannot repeat, not go back and make any manual changes to these right. settings. That's, and, and, and that's so you, that's on purpose, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, which makes sense, but it really it really bugged me because Dave was sending us updates uh, to the manual stuff, and I was simply not able to, uh, to <laughs> yeah, make remove manual it updates it until I went yeah. and deleted the profile. I don't think very many people are going to be affected by that. No, but if you it's, are, it's a big it's a big uh, revelation to uh, know that. This, yeah, this is this is a little bit of a, of a deeper dive on e on email, but it's it, it's good to know when you set when you're setting up it on your on your iOS device. And this is how we have it set up for for the club here, you know, with me setting the uh, the email address and uh, I, I just gave you the host name instead of the the profile. So if you actually go into settings, and I believe uh, profiles, I remember I think it's under general. 
Uh, yes. So you have the uh, device management profiles and it also adds email profiles. I don't have any of those in there. Like this is how my, my work email actually sets up device management. It, it actually creates a device management profile. If there's any email profiles that are in there, it automatically ends, it adds those in there as well. It's actually a very secure way of doing that and keeping your email address more secure. That's the reason why a lot of the email services are doing that now is just, it's, it should have worked. And then unfortunately in this case, it didn't. So, uh, but uh, you know, it's good to know. Definitely that's good to know. Any other questions? Okay, let's uh, go into, I was gonna talk a little bit about privacy because that always gets perplexing uh, as far as understanding how privacy works here. So I'm going to, I'm in the settings right now and I'm going to go into privacy right here right now. I wanted to kind of talk about this a little bit. Um, location services, that's probably the most important thing to understand what, what that does. Um, location services should stay on as default. I mean, if you turn it off, yeah, you're going to be secure, but then it's also going to affect you being able to connect to things and find things and apps just won't like, won't, won't be happy and they won't work. But the nice thing is, I know I have a really insanely long, large list of, of, of apps here. Uh, but unfortunately, as you install apps, they, they want to be able to have a location so they understand where you are. Um, and the good thing is most of them, if you go into like, uh, if you go into this app, it says uh, it has the choice you can do as well using the app. That's usually how I set each app is, is that. If it doesn't have a choice, that, that, that kind of bugs me like Alexa. I have it set to always, oh, I shouldn't have said that because that's going to go off behind me here. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I, you, you have, I have it set to always only because I like it to, to be able to, to hear when I'm, when I'm talking. And you, you could set that to while using if you wanted to. Um, but the rest of them, um, uh, the rest of them, there are apps that may narrow it down to uh, uh, only uh, uh, now and uh, always or, or never, which you know makes me, I'm like, okay, I, I would prefer you not uh, do that. So, um, so like ballpark, a lot, a lot of them are in here. So you actually can go in here and be granular if you want to, and and, and say never uh, if you don't want it, it to happen. There, like here's DoorDash, and I have it hey, next time. Go ahead, yeah. yeah. Um, I read an article not too long ago that suggested, and I'll just pass the suggestion along. Yeah, please, sir. Yeah, yeah. They suggested that instead of uh, now that we have this option to ask, they said for your apps that you rarely use, mm -hmm. change those to ask. And then in for the few times that you use them, then you just you say, you know, ask, uh, you know, you give it permission that one time only. And, yeah. uh, and that way it doesn't actually have any, um, lo it That's doesn't have idea. access to your location until you actually use the app and it asks you and you say, yeah, this one time. Oh, that's a great tip. Yeah, no, no, thank you. Um, yeah, that, that's not a bad idea at all. So, you know, like I don't go to Wendy's very often. I can probably set that to ask next time. Um, and, and Frank had a question too. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, is, is if while using is on um, and you're not using it, is it still doing something to maintain your location? In other words, is, it, uh, is there a battery uh, no. usage involved in keeping these things on no i think i think ios 13 has done a much better job of battery management than it isn't a problem but it isn't a bad idea if you are have run into some of these issues you could go in through some of these apps and, and change it i think as i'm going through all these apps i i i noticed i'm noticing here that most apps are, are either saying uh while using the app or or ask next time so i think they they, they put that in by by default now so but no there is no issue as far as uh, the yeah. battery Okay. You can you can notice just if you just look at the little uh, stop on weather there, Dave. The little show the put the so weather is actively using it right now. Dave's right. weather is actually is actively using it, and so was something else. System services. Uh, the app store actually was, I believe. Yeah, uh, yeah, but there's several of them that have gone by. I got there. never on the app store. <laughs> yeah. The Apple Watch faces. I know. I'm gonna ask next time. I don't. I don't change my face. So anymore. that's that's what it means. That little chevron there. Yeah. So if you look up to up, up to uh, Dave's phone at um, on the on the up there at the top, see this by his seven fifty one time. Something mm -hmm. is actively using uh, uh, location right now on his right. phone. That little chevron next to the seven fifty one. Right. Yeah. So if I can, and even I though he's not on the app store, using the app store, it's going. No, no, no. It's hollow. It's when it's filled in. It's still, so something is something is used there now, but it didn't go away yet. So notice there's 
See, there's filled and hollow, and I forgot the difference be between the two. Yeah, and maybe I there is a to. maybe I'm so just, it looks filled. No, no, no. The one up at the top is not. The one by the 752 is hollow, and I forgot if there's a difference. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, I think if it's hollow, it means it was it's been used in the last like 24 hours or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Something there's something that. about that. So. If you scroll to the bottom of that sure. long list. Yep. Yeah, there's the answer. <laughs> there oh, it is. Yeah. There it is. Thank yeah. you, Al. <laughs> I knew it was is somewhere. There... Question? Yes. Is there any way to know whether these things retain a memory of where you've been? Depends on the app. Uh, but yes. So they... some of them might. So that's, that's uh, a lack Absolutely. of privacy to some extent or could be. Uh, could be. It, it, the, uh, Apple has fairly decent uh, review methodologies, but you're right. Yeah. So if, if, good, we, we went down to the bottom here. So as you see, the, the hollow arrow in case that it's an item that may receive your location under certain conditions. So it depends on the condition. So that's what it's set at right now. Um, if uh, oh, I stop, stop sharing, I didn't do that. I didn't do it. <laughs> I know. Uh, maybe reflector was not liking me being on too much. I'll come back. All right, hold on, guys. There we go. Weird. It's on a roll there, too. <laughs> All right, let's share again here. There we go. Should be able to see it now. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so... If it's a, a full proper URL, that means the item uh, has recently used your location, and there's a gray one that has, says it has not, that an item has used your location in the last 24 hours. So this is gray, actually, it's not purple. Um, but it's also good to know about system services. If you go, oh, this is scrolling all the way down the bottom. I don't think anybody is as crazy as I am, as many apps I have. Well, maybe Bob. <laughs> but uh, I'll go into system uh, services here, and this is where you actually can granularly turn off things that you don't want. Um, so well, one of the ones I turn off all the time is Apple location-based ads. I don't want anybody, these ad advertisers to know where I'm at. So I leave that off. But the rest of these items, you, know, you pretty much should stay, keep them on uh, just from the basis of location, uh, especially emergency, finding your iPhone, the home kit, all that stuff. Um, they do have product improvement items that are turned on too. So that, that could be what it's also doing if it's, uh, if it's doing for locations. Um, that doesn't bother me. It isn't, it isn't a huge issue. Um, and here's, here's uh, Susan, actually, this is actually here is significant locations. It shows where my history of where I've been. So there you go right there. <laughs> kind of scary. Uh, shows last places I had been in the last, uh, it was like going back since October last year. I was in, I was in Plano and Frisco, Texas. Uh, yikes. I remember being there. Oh yeah, I was in there. I was in Nashville. <laughs> but that's your phone itself. We don't know if the, whoever is running your app can keep track of this. Well, that's how it gets there, but is by uh, by location and. But and but the, the app, but whether the app is getting the data and reporting it back to. Yeah, that that we don't know. That we don't know a hundred percent. But I would venture. I would venture to say I wouldn't worry uh, too much if it does. System uh, services. Yeah. Well, system services is yeah, different. But yeah, yeah, that's that's where we're in now. Yep. So. My understanding is that significant locations is almost entirely used by Siri and the services that run under it, whether it's voice or not. That's right. That's good. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Um, that makes sense. Makes total sense. All right. Anybody else have any other questions about privacy, location services? Like I said, don't turn it off. You need to have it on. Um, I know you so, uh, there's, there's some, there's some interesting upsides to location services and, uh, and I'll explain one of them that, and, and yeah, it's please. a little bit of an upside or a downside. So, uh, we've been buying our groceries uh, by pickup at Walmart. So Linda goes in, my wife goes in and creates an order, and uh, they send you they send you a message in the app that your order is ready to pick up, and you say I'm on the way, and you leave the you just kind of leave the app there, okay? And um, when you arrive, it autom the app auto automatically informs them that you're there, and then the person brings your groceries out. So you know, there's some cool things about that. Okay. Um, yeah. Now there, there may or may not be some downsides, but it, that's one of the cool things about having, letting location services do its job. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, it, it, 
I, I honestly, I'm not, I'm not worried about the privacy. I think Apple does a very good, fairly good job of keeping us secure. So I don't, I don't, I'm not too, too worried about it. Well, yeah, plus, plus you can control what uh, apps um, have access to it and which ones don't, you know? Right. Yes. So I agree, Randy, 100%. Yeah. Yep. So you have control. That's why I wanted to go through this and show everybody. All right. Let me move to the iPad. See, I'm going to be doing some navigation here. Uh, let me stop sharing. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the new feature that they added in uh, iPad OS that you can do a split view and be able to share share two things at once here. So hold on. Go into sharing here. Hold on. Of course, I have the iPad over it far to my right here. This. We don't need to see both. As fun as it is seeing both, we don't need to. There we go. And then we'll see what we got. <laughs> and share. That. All right. Everybody see that? Okay. Looks good. Okay. So what I've got is I've got, I've opened up a Word document. Let me just go back, I'll just do it again. So I've got Word here. I've got Word sitting down in, in the system tray in um, uh, on the iPad here in the far right here. And the tray, not system tray. Um, so I'm launching that. So I've got a brochure I'm starting to work on here. And I said, hmm, I, I wanna open up another another version of this. So what I can do is I can, I can scroll up here, bring the bar up, I tap and don't hard tap. I tap and, and drag, which it works for me when I try it, and drag it over to here, and let go. It can be a hover over or it could actually join. So if I, let's say if I have another brochure here, uh, right now it's a floating window. Um, let me try it again here. There we go. So now I have a side-by-side -side view of, of two documents that I can I can be looking at at, at the same time. So you have that one, and you have that one right there. So now you have, and you can adjust this, just the size if you want uh, for, for dual screen, gives you the option to, to, to be able to look at one document and be able to uh, work on another here. Uh, so those are two different documents. They are. Even though they look the same. I'm gonna, in fact, I'm going to open up a new document here, so you just just to prove that it's two different documents. There you go. <laughs> okay. So I can work on this document, and I can be working on this document, and have it, and and you can copy, paste, drag, drag things between it. Um, and uh, this is this is new from Microsoft. They finally added it to Word, Word and PowerPoint. I think are the two that would be the most beneficial for this. Uh, but uh, this is the split screen. Um, and then you could also add a third if you wanted to. Um, then that's like a hover over what I just did. Like if I brought this over, well, that switched it, but um, um, I believe you can do that. Yeah, so then I have a third one here too as well. If you really want to get multitasking uh, talented, then be able to look at the, that as well for split screen. Um, but the split screen is, is really cool. Um, I think it's a, it's a, it's a great idea. Um, and, um, and pull that out there. And uh, gives you a lot of a lot of uh, benefits as far as you know, of being able to multitask on an iPad. And uh, you know, not everybody has an iPad that does that, that wants to do that. But you, I don't think it's a bad. Go ahead. Would, you, would you see if uh, Keynote and Pages do that? Sure. Let's try Pages. Open up a document. All right, and then if I bring up pages here, let's try that. It sure does. Now, how about a keynote document? I think, again, all Apple, when Apple demoed this, they basically demoed their apps, and then they said other apps, right. third-party apps, may eventually, you know, be able to do this. But Keynote and Pages are both Apple apps. 
Right, which is why I think they all will do it, as well as Safari, the browser, and Notes. Um, I'm going to try Keynote. I've used this, uh, I don't use it often, but I did use this one time to, to take a bunch of websites and save the URLs in a, in a note. So I just dragged them from the URL bar and put them in a note, and that worked really nicely. Uh, just in a pause here for a second, there were some people who joined. Uh, you can, oh. anybody can talk. We've got it talking permitted. I just did, I yeah, just now you. got them all authorized. I didn't scroll down enough. I apologize for not that's okay. Letting you in to start out with the uh, people who you came in late. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 actually going to be finished here with iPad, and we're going to do some some Apple uh, some watch tips here. We got about a little less than thirty minutes left here, um, and um, uh, welcome for those who just joined. And, and you can use the chat room to uh, to chat to uh, type in a question. But uh, he, as Bob said, uh, he also uh, unmuted you, so you are have the ability to to speak as well. Wanted to make it a little more interactive, so. Any other questions about uh, split view and sharing and other kind of stuff? All right. Yeah, Let's once see. you got that, hi, Dave. Once you got hi, that window open where you've got a split screen and you want to mm -hmm. remove it, how do you get rid of it? Oh, good question. Let's, let's do it. Thank you. So what you do is you, you tap the middle here and um, drag it over until it's gone. And it isn't gone because it'll it'll still be opened behind the scenes there. See, it's got the other one open there. Then I can go back to it. So then it's then oh. it's separated out. See, I tried to do it, and now I've got something up over Zoom, and I can't I can't get rid of it. Yeah, now. You, yeah, you gotta you gotta drag over it. Yeah, to 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 remove that. Yep. So, I think I saw Joe uh, raise his hand. Uh, Joe yeah, Hayes. Joe just raised his hand. Yeah. Do you have a question? Yep, you have to unmute. No, all right. Photo on the oh, right. No. I unmuted him. Okay, go ahead, Joe. I I use split screen all the time. I use photos yeah. on the right, and then uh, email or messages on the left, and go. it's really easy to transfer. But my question yep. is, my mm -hmm. iPad Pro uh, will not. Uh, copy and paste to between that and my iPhone 10. It'll go one way, but not the other. And I've checked connections and I don't know what to do. Are you trying to do it through AirDrop? Like dropping photos between the devices or? Uh, no, I just mentioned the photos because that's how I use it. No, uh, just um, text. I can, I can do text between our my old iPad Pro and my iPhone, but my new iPad Pro doesn't, it, it doesn't connect. Ah, uh, <laughs> you have to have, you have to be on the same Wi-Fi network and you have to have yes. Bluetooth on in order for that to work. I sometimes have yep. Bluetooth off, so make sure you have Bluetooth on, on that newer device. Oh, both are Bluetooth on and on the same network. And it's interesting, I can do it from the iPhone to the new iPad Pro, the 12.9, but I cannot do it the other way. Hmm. Is this a, a 2020 iPad Pro or the 2018? It's a 2018. Okay, I, I'll test it and see uh, at home here. Because I, I, I think I've done it both ways on my devices, but I'll test it at home later. And if I figure anything out, I'll ping you. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. All right. You know, if anything, put it, uh, put a uh, topic in the community. Yeah. How, please. I didn't know you could go between devices. Can you explain the basic technique, assuming it'll work oh, oh, oh. from phone to iPad? Is that or neat? <laughs> I'm going to post it? something on this. Definitely. <laughs> there, has a Sorry. Hold on. Go ahead, go ahead, Randy. Um, I was going to say, I read an article about this when it came out. Um, well, actually, I read an article about this a few months ago. It came out a couple OS releases ago. It's called Connectivity. Uh, Apple's got a fantastic document, and I will post that in the okay, community yeah, explaining how this all works for those who want to yeah. look at that. For the sake of time here, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. 
let me uh, stop sharing here. I'm going to do a couple of Apple Watch tips. So I've, I've gone the, the, through the whole gamut this, uh, this session here. Uh, iPhone, iPad, now the Apple Watch here. Now this one's going to be challenging. I'm switching cameras, and I'm going to put my watch under the camera here and see if I can pull this off here. So let's see, uh, see what we can do. Um, all right. So I'm not going to share. Let me turn on my camera so no sharing. Uh, I'll switch to this camera. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, spotlight my camera here. Okay, so a couple tips here. Um, this is the uh, you know, when you push push the, uh, uh, the the dial here, you 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 have two choices as far as how it can look. You have the you have the grid view and then you have the list view. I like the list view. Uh, this is the grid view. So then, of course, you have all the apps here that you can access just by scrolling through. But I kind of like the, the grid the grid list view because it's a little easier to just thumb through here and actually go through and uh, and uh, and be able to, to, to change that. So um, and then uh, but if you want to be able to organize them, you got it back in the grid view here. So if you tap you can actually you can tap and hold these apps that are a little hard to move around and see how the, it's easier to move these around and you can you can organize them and then see what happened also i tapped they're wiggling right now so uh, let's say i wanted to uh, delete one of these apps i can um all i do is just uh with, your, with these, these small buttons here you tap it and then i'm just going to delete this just to show uh, that we can do this and um it's uh you uh you tap delete and then the app disappears um so it gives you a little 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 easier way of, of um, controlling how to access these apps. You also can do this on the iPhone if you wanted to. Um, the iPhone uh, also has uh, accessibility for all the, uh, the apps too, um, if you want to uh, want to do that as well. Um, the, I wanted to show you a little bit uh, with, uh, with messages. Um, if I go into messages here, I have a message here and say I wanna, say I wanna come back and uh, uh, access this, I just want to tap it. I can, I can, I can go back and actually this is a tap back. So I can, I can heart this thumb up, thumbs up this just by just, just touching it. Uh, Cause you also have the, the, the option of doing it. If you tap and hold, you can get this menu up as well and be able to, you know, do things like reply or uh, and get details. You can share your location then you can change the language. Uh, so you have that option as well. Um, and I uh, thought that's pretty cool to have. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, this is my favorite. Uh, if you swipe up on the menu here and you notice this button here, I can tap this right now. And it, it, it actually shows, it's, it's actually telling me where my iPhone is. So it's like a, like a quick locator. I'm sure many of us have used that. Um, let me put my iPhone here too. Uh, so you can kind of see what it does here. Uh, you also can tap and hold, hold this. See, see what it's doing now. Not only is it pinging it, it flashes it, and it keeps. So, so if I do that again, so if you can't, if you're hearing it very faintly, but you're in the room, it'll actually flash it too. So I think that's pretty cool being able to, to find that. I don't know if anybody knew that. So had that tip. saved me from losing a phone twice. Yes. So, um, do you say this works on the uh, the uh, the list view? Can work on an iPhone. Well, no, this, this is the, the list view is on uh, on the Apple Watch. Um, if you want right. to, if you, but you no, the the, the view that's in, in on the Apple on the iPhone itself stays the same. That doesn't get changed. yeah. You can't do a list. Yeah. The alphabetical order of the list view is very very useful to me. <laughs> uh, I read I read the rumor today that they're supposed to be coming out with the list view for the iPhone also. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, okay, we've got about uh, a little less than uh, 20 minutes left here. I'm going to, I'm going to run through one, one app. Uh, actually, I'll, this would be shout out to Rich. Rich, is Rich here today, tonight? Um, I believe. Uh, got a couple that... of hands up too. Okay, let's answer questions first then. Go ahead. Let's go ahead. Uh, Jeff, or not Jeff, uh, Joe. Joseph. Okay, Joe. You, you might have to unmute yourself again. Let me switch cameras. Who's going to the other uh into the other apps and trying to look for something, 
I have an apple face for daytime and an apple face for nighttime. And that saves me looking through all the apps, looking for things. Mm -hmm. That's great. It's great. Uh, Davis. Hey, Davis. Hey, Bob. Hey, Dave. How are you doing, guys? Hey, everybody. Um, hey. I just wanted to lend a comment to alphabetizing apps on the iPhone. If you reset your home screen, it will automatically alphabetize all of your apps. If so, if that's what you're looking for, at least it will be alphabetical. Yep. Reset your home screen. It will reset all of your apps in alphabetical order. So it, it will reset. Correct. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. It'll take away the default home screen layout and it will alphabetize everything from, from A to Z. How do you, uh, how do you reset that? And where? In settings? Correct. It's, it's in the reset menu. I was going to bring it up on the. Uh, yeah, Dave, you can. You got the mic. No, no, you could. There was a good. General. We, we were helping each other here. You can, you can use this tip. Let me just share my, my phone here. We can do it. General reset. Reset all content. Home reset home screen layout. Oh, correct. Okay. Yeah, so I got now, the now, I now got that it. may take everything out of folders too. Yeah. That's so fine. be aware. Be aware of that. Yep. Yeah, but it but it will alphabetize everything. If that's what you're looking for. Okay. Yep. There's there's what I wanted. It's the settings in the reset. Be and be very careful in this menu being here because this could oh, also work. You could be tapping things you don't want to be doing. Um, yeah, like remove all cellular plants. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, if you click the reset home screen layout, just like 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 David said, be be aware that. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be uh, it, it's going to, it may take all your files that you've put in folders um, out and then every did. single app and I just tried it and it did. Yeah. <laughs> so now you're going to have. But a, it didn't do it on the first screen. Okay, so yeah, you can just as you see here, I have a lot of pages and I need to I would like to folder up here, put some folders up. But yeah, that's uh, yeah that that's a good idea. Becky, uh, Becky and Ed have their hand up too. Okay. Yeah, I, if if we have uh, oh. a minute or two to do it, uh, no, I have. Unsuccessfully tried to use the walkie-talkie feature. Uh, works very well. Or it's supposed to work well when you're out in stores and stuff. I'm guessing you both need you need to be both uh, Bluetooth and the same Wi-Fi network. Is that correct? No, no, no. Not right. Bluetooth. No, it's just Bluetooth. Just Bluetooth, right? All right, we're gonna have to practice some more. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought it was just Wi-Fi. Go pra practice, practice. Yeah, uh, if it's Wi-Fi there, you're going to be kind of messed up uh, unless you're both on yeah. the same Wi-Fi network. Why is that same? Hey, Bob, I've been able to use wife uh, walkie-talkie over cellular. Cellular. Over cellular. Yeah, yeah, cellular. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah. I meant data, not blue. I said data. I should have said data. Yeah, it should. It should. Walkie-talkie should work, but I don't think it uses blue. I was saying I didn't think it used Bluetooth, but it, I can't get anybody in the family to play with play with it, so I don't know. I'm having the same problem. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, you you know, you can add walkie talkie contacts for into the walkie talkie app from your contact list. So if you're needing people outside of your direct family, they're in there, just add them. I just, yeah. Ed, I just invite you to a walkie talkie session so you can, it, 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 I don't know if it prompts you or not, but. You just said the connection failed. Let me try to reconnect. Yeah. Do I have to have mine on like all contacts? Uh, probably. Yeah, so it permits that. Yeah, so it permits it. it you came through very briefly, Dave, and then it, now we're just got the uh, hamster on the wheel checking availability. I don't want to take a lot of time with this. I've, I've played around with it a bunch no, of times. But if you want to, I, I've invited you, so we can try. You, you're welcome to walkie talking me at any time. Oh, goodness. Not, yes. not any time. Not, not, not <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, more more questions, and I, I have one. And I have one app I'm going to talk about here too. Anybody else have any burning questions here? No. You know everything there is to know about your iPhone and iPad and Apple Watch, right? That's because everybody's been staying at home and playing with their toys. That's right. All right. Well, um, I believe Rich is here. Um, he 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 hooked me onto this app called Press Reader.
I didn't even, I didn't even remember realize this this app it existed um, until I tried it. Um, this is really cool because what it does is it allows you to take advantage of your library and be able to read uh, publications for free. I, I think, wow, this is awesome. Um, and, and here, if I want to really read the Los Angeles Times, um, I can tap read and it brings it up. Uh, and you saw what it ha happened. It came up where I live in Mount Prospect. It says brought to you by your Mount Prospect Public Library, and then you can you can tap the article and then you can read it. And it brings it in the rich rich mode, be able to, to review it. I thought this was so cool. And Which app is that? This is called Press Reader. Oh, Press Reader. Yes. And then you can add your account just by you have to have just have your library card number and and, and your and your pin. However, you, your library does it. Most libraries do it that way. Like now, I didn't I didn't want to pay for the Chicago Tribune, so now I can read it. See, brought to you by the Mount Prospect Public Library. I just tap read, and now I can read the, today's edition of the Chicago Tribune, and, and it's cool because it brings up the it, it graphically, and I can look at it like I'm reading the paper. And then if I want to, um, if I want to read the article, I can just. Uh, uh, tap the link and then it gives you a rich view, rich uh, text view of, uh, of it and uh, it's really cool. So Dave, I have a philosophical question for you. Sure. Okay. So I'm looking, I, I, I go into the app store to see press reader and there's two entries for press reader. The oh. first one is an advertisement for press reader. And then the second one is press reader. Which button would you push? I wouldn't do the ad. Me, let's, me neither. Let's, 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 <laughs> Let's look. Let's 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 look at that. That's a good. Uh, that's a good. Yeah, thing uh, I just thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. So if you go into the app store, what he's talking about is. Um, so I went to search, and then of course he typed in press reader. Uh, I did a space. space. One word. No, oh, it's one word, right? Yeah. So you tap that, and in this case, it didn't come up with an ad. Yeah, it is me, right there. there oh yeah, is. that's right. Uh, the the one above it is an ad. Um, you can see it, it, it shows it, yeah. Yeah, because it says ad, see that everybody, um, you know, I didn't even highlight my, my new my new mouse, but it's anything I have. Yeah, but I mean, it says Everybody, everybody see my mouse? Yes. Yeah. And see how cool that is, purple? No, all we got is a cursor, a regular cursor. Oh, really? That is uh, cool. How about that? Can you see it magnified? How'd you get a mouse up there with the with the keyboard? No, I have, a, there's an app. Um, do, do people see that when I magnify it? Well, Can you see that magnified like that? I can I see can't, it. I can't, uh, but I'm in the I'm I'm in the panelist, okay. so I may not see it. I might I might have to share my whole screen in order for it to do that because it's in the mouse. But I'm seeing it right now. With I us. see it. Yeah. You see the purple the purple circle? No, no I can see a regular cursor. An arrow. No, oh, you see my arrow. Okay. Okay. Right. Share the whole it's screen. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but uh, yeah, just be aware of that. That the, uh, Bob is right. I mean, those are ads. Um, and you can. You can rightly put it, but I don't. I don't like to give advertisers. I, I, I with you. Anyway, I just, I just found that as a, an interesting thing to mention. <laughs> so if you don't have, a, if you don't have a library uh, that that participates in this, and I'd be surprised if anybody that's on this call uh, doesn't, um, you can sign up for for services, and I, uh, there is a free trial that you can try out here. And that's, well, I got to check to see if my library participates. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive. I, I mean, it was showing, uh, let me, let's go, even go in here. We can look. Um, and yeah. Susan has her hand up. So Susan, okay. jump in. Go ahead, Susan. Okay. Well, I've got a question about an app that I think is just for the Mac. Is it okay to ask it here? Um, Somebody did a, did, I don't know if it was a keynote or a PowerPoint presentation, but when they point, did something with a mouse, and for example, they trace the mouse around the world. The mouse left a kind of a trail behind it so that you could almost, if you kept moving it, you could really, really got a loop around the word that was being circled, for example. So it, it, like a comet trail. Anybody yeah, know anything about that? There's two or, th there's two or three of those. Can, can, can everybody see my mouse now? I'm sharing my whole screen. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. See the round circle that's dragging? Yes. Yes, yes. now I see it. Well, yeah. Now you see it. Okay. Now, Bob, you see if, it, you if you this? could send me a list of the, the yes, options, I will. I'd I'll send it. it to you. Can everybody see that when I magnify? Yeah, it it, it zoomed yeah. it. Yeah. Isn't it awesome? Very nice. This is Very this nice. is here, here. You go, Susan. This is the only one you should go, go with. This is called uh, Pro Mouse. It's, and it's Pro it's, Mouse. Okay. And it's like four dollars. It's four bucks. It's in the Mac <laughs> App Store. Worth every penny. Okay. I, I wasn't even using it tonight, so now I I I, I, no, I so. See how I can highlight, and you can look at how magnified that is there. And that's Pro Mouse. It's called Pro Mouse. 
See this, okay. I can do spotlight where it shows all purple and I'm only spotlighting when I'm showing. That's cool. Okay. And then, then I can draw. That's on, on a cool. Screen. Okay, but this is different from the one that leaves the comic trail on the, on the Mac itself. Yeah, I don't know which one that is. I don't is. know which one that is. I tried another one called uh, Mouse Pose and it, I couldn't get it Well, to that work just and, gives and, you a, a brightens part of the screen. or magnifies. No, Mouse Pose is actually more sophisticated than that. But uh, I play, I'm i playing with this one, and uh, I, I'm going to uninstall Mouse Pose because this one does exactly yeah. what I want it to do. Yeah. So, Pro yeah. Mouse, you mean? Yeah, okay. Pro Mouse. Yeah. <laughs> is it two words or one? <laughs> one, um, don't remember. You could just type it in. It'll come up. It's yeah, in the Mac app store. Susan, okay. are you thinking of what Margaret did uh, for her uh, presentation uh, on Saturday? Because what you're describing, I, have, I missed like, that. I just got up too late and missed it completely. All right, what, what, what you're describing time. sounds a lot like what she did with uh, with her uh, presentation on. Uh, yeah, well, when when it finally gets posted, I'll watch it then. It, it's posted. It's posted. I sent it off. Is it? Oh, okay. I sent okay. it out uh, on the YouTube on channel. Okay. Uh, all I gotta do is go to the back to the email I sent to everybody. Hey, uh, hey Dave, I've got a, a comment. Yes. Um, I posted uh, Apple's support document on Walkie Talkie on the uh, community forum. I found it and posted it. It's got all the information about the requirements. Uh, it, it uses FaceTime, so you've got to have FaceTime uh, set up. There you it go. Says, there you go. And uh, it's all out there. So anybody who's interested, there's a there document. You go. Ooh, he's Thank the man. you very much, Randy. Appreciate it. No Thank problem. you. This, this, that's the beauty of this community <laughs> and having this set up because now we got information right there. And Randy, you're so good. And, it's, to... and it stays there. It doesn't get lost it's in up, email. I love it. And yeah. find it anytime. Yeah. Everybody should be in this community. If you're not in this community, make sure you let us know because uh, looks uh, it's becoming more and more active. We're going to keep this uh, per permanently now. And uh, this has definitely become a very big benefit of our membership. So please. Uh, Please join the join join the fun. There's a lot a lot of great discussion out here. So, um, and uh, with that, I'm gonna leave, leave the last five minutes open for you. You can ask me any questions, uh, iOS related, um, and uh, and uh, any problems you're having so far. Um, I have a question for the those who are attending today, and that I mean I know they all can't answer, but um, I'm using the Zoom app on my iPad as opposed to using the website. I'm, I'm curious to know how many people are using the app. And the reason I'm asking that is because on the app, I don't know if this is true on the website because I've only used the app, but um, on the app, uh, when you have these uh, screenshots, these full screens, I can just pinch and zoom in to look at detail on the screen and make some text larger so I can read it. I don't know if that's doable when you're using the website, but it's a really nice feature in the app. Yeah, no. I, I only use the app on the on the iPad, so I can't yeah. tell you. Yeah, you can I, zoom in, which is very nice. Yeah, I, I just I, I loaded up earlier yeah. when I was doing some testing. And, well, yeah. I tend to watch on on a computer, and I don't think this. Well, I guess you can expand the screen, but yeah, you can do that. I've never tried. I haven't tried it on my computer, but I know it works on the iPad beautifully. Yeah, yes, iPad is very yeah, nice. It would. It yeah. would. It does. Uh, Joe. Uh, Joe's got his you hand up, but I don't think he's okay. I don't think he's unmuting okay. himself. I've been unmuting okay. you, Joe. Yeah. You have to unmute yourself. Okay. Bob, you can uh, oh, Dave, I see. you can set up a poll. You can set up a poll so we can all say if we use the app or the or the uh, yeah, uh, if you want. Browser. Okay. I, I'm using the app as well. Yeah. And it works pretty well. And uh, I just wanted to thank you guys for, for trying all this. This is fantastic. Yeah, no, I think this worked out really well tonight. Um, and uh, um, we're, I'm going to do it again. And I, if you didn't see the announcement I put in the community where the next iPhone SIG is actually going to be June 23rd. Uh, it's the day after the Worldwide uh, Developers Conference. So it's going to give us some great opportunities to talk about uh, what, what was announced. Um, and that, that's what we had done when I added this June session last year, um, the last few years. Uh, we would uh, hold it right after the WWDC. So uh, that's what's going to end up happening for the, ne uh, the next time we have this. Uh, if you have any feedback, there's uh, there's going to be a survey that's going to pop up after we we uh, we shut uh, end the meeting for tonight. I uh, would love to hear your feedback. Um, we got just basic questions you have to, we ask you please answer, um, and then there's some optional questions. But I would love to hear if you have any topic suggestions because I'm always asking for that, and I would love to hear what your what your thoughts are. What you'd like to see? What you'd like me to talk about? Um, it, it it just it would be it would be great to to be able to. Uh, uh, 
uh, to do that and uh, and provide what you guys are you know getting your value of, of, your, of your membership and why, why why I do this and why I enjoy doing this because uh, I want you guys to, to to be able to learn and be able to understand uh, you know, what's going on. So please uh, please fill out that survey for me and uh, and uh, we will share it with the board and uh, I know we'll, we'll we'll take it back and and. Uh, I'll check that as well. I'm also asking if anybody is interested in wanting to lead a SIG. That would be great too. Um, we're all, now, now that we're doing this, I think this is uh, even more of an opportunity to talk about other topics. I know Jeff, you're thinking about doing a photography SIG and bringing that back, and um, com a couple others might be interested in a, a, a side topic uh, that would be great to talk about because not everybody's interested in, in, in iPhone and iOS. So, um, uh, uh, so that's uh, that's definitely. Uh, uh, an option to, to, to add some more SIGs in the future. So, yeah, I was uh, definitely interested in, in adding in a photography SIG, and I've uh, yeah. talked to a couple of our members, and they're ready to support it. Awesome. So, I think we're. we're, we're yeah, we're if I don't have that. to travel, I'd be joining the SIGs. I never came to the iPhone one because I didn't want to travel. Sure. Uh, uh, Tom, answer your question. Uh, the, that's a Pro Mouse. It's, it's in the App Store. Yes. Thank you, Bargain. <laughs> Um, anybody else have any other last questions before we wrap this up for tonight? Well, no, I just agree that uh, I, I wouldn't have uh, done this um, because we can't drive at night. So I really yes. appreciate this. Yeah, we're, this is really, uh, I think this has all made us a lot to, uh, to think about things and how we do it. Uh, uh, especially the fact that now we're, you know, we have to do a lot of these uh, these types of sessions now because of of, the, of coronavirus. So, I'm hoping that uh, uh, and I'm I'm, I'm and we're we're, we're going to look at this once things start to open up and we can start meeting together again. Is that the in person meetings are always a lot of fun too? I like to see everybody in person. Um, but uh, but we definitely can start doing more of these uh, and it obviously works. And I it worked tonight. I, I unmuted everybody and, and this was a great session. So yeah, I'm, every everybody, uh, thank you all because it all yeah. it worked very well. I mean, we have what, like 32 or 35 people and yeah. I've only had to hit a couple of, couple of noisy mics once or twice, so. Yeah, no, it was, <laughs> you guys were great. And I, I, I wanted to try it out because I know we had a comment from the main, the main meeting saying that uh, they would love to be able to interact to be voice. And, and I gave you that option and you, were, and you guys took advantage of it, so. Hey, Dave. Yeah. I, I just have a comment. Um, uh, I, I, I don't know how many people are gonna know what this, I'm referring to, but I didn't hear any flushing toilets in the background. <laughs> yeah. yeah i sure hope not <laughs> well, you know what i'm talking about yeah, i heard somebody know. doing dishes <laughs> yeah dishes i heard yeah planking yeah. talking my uh, first sig because i can't travel on a weeknight sure. and okay. so i appreciate you opening this up well thank you elizabeth i, I we, we appreciate you being a member and uh we're going to look to even if when, when we if we do go if when we go back uh, to yeah. doing live sessions, I think we're going to we're going to live stream them um, so that other members can see it just like we are now. Um, I didn't share this, the link out there to, to, to the whole world, but uh, it's going to be recorded. This this session is going to be is, re, is recorded on YouTube, so I'm going to send out another email to, to to all the members, and you'll be able to go back and watch this later. Um, might have to edit some of the stuff at the beginning because it took. <laughs> Well, to get started yeah, and, cut it off and whatever yeah yeah but uh I'll, yeah we'll, we'll have a, a nice session out on youtube and then you can watch go back and watch this and, and we'll do the same thing uh, when uh, and dave how would somebody yeah. find that on youtube what would they search for what i'm well it's unlisted so what i'm gonna do ah. is i'm i've been sending out an email through our, our email blast. okay oh, just like just just yeah there was just like i did for the main meeting last okay from, from, from my saturday there'll be we'll, a link we'll, and we'll, we'll probably it. leave them unlisted for now yeah yeah. I, you know what I may, what I may do is I may just post it in the community too, so you have a link for it there as well. That's yeah, we idea. could you know we could create a running. Uh, a really let's, create, let's click a, create a running. Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Thread on that way we can just add, keep adding to it. Yeah. So we can we can pin something and you can just yeah. add to it. Yeah, we'll do that. This, this community is working out really well, and I think uh, all of you are enjoying it. And this you, this uh, alone, you're getting that value from your membership, and we appreciate yeah. it. Um, but again, when the, when the survey come up, comes up, please, please fill that out for, me, for us. And uh, we would love to hear your feedback. And, and like I said, I, I always have a tough time. I have challenged to come up with topics and I love to uh, hear from you. If, if something that, that's, that's been interest of you, uh, 
we can come up with something and then the next time we meet here uh, i will uh, i will definitely put it as part of some of the sessions any other last questions before i wrap it up no just thank you very much dave nope. dave you. i think Great you job, should join dave. the programming committee what's that i think you should join the program team well, i kind of am part of it so we'll uh, we've got some, we we'll got have some. to involve you more Thank you, He's Dave. Involved. Thank you, Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everybody. You guys can go. Thank Thanks, you. Dave. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Frank, Dave. Frank, you missed our meeting on, on uh, yesterday, so uh, I was there. I know you were there, and I didn't know there was a meeting. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. You have to look Thanks. on Slack, Frank. You Thanks, everybody. Slack. Thanks for Bye. being here. Send an email, will you? Slack. Bye. 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 <laughs>